Look, this video is going out to everyone out there that trades the future markets, especially if you trade the equities, you know, the um, uh, indices like the NASDAQ, the E-mini S&P 500, the Dow, the Russell. But it doesn't really matter really when it comes to futures, you know, um, in reference to the instruments you may trade, the contracts, say, for example, commodities or currencies or the financials. It doesn't really matter because the strategy that I'm just going to kind of I'm not going to break it down. I'm just going to show you examples today in this video here uh, about just a, a formula based strategy that I put together that has allowed me to become profitable and make an income from trading full time for a living. All right. So if you're someone that's maybe struggling, trying to identify or find a strategy, maybe you understand market structure because I talk about that is the most important ingredient to trading. That's the most co important component. And maybe you're trying to, you've got that down pat and you're trying to find a way or, or a good strategy, something that's solid that's going to allow you to make some money every single day. Now, first and foremost, understand trading is very risky. Practice proper risk management when trading and knowing when to get out of a trade, okay, that you take so that you don't incur any or much drawdown, all right? So you don't want to blow your accounts, okay? People do that all the time because... You know, they have a hard time getting out, and that could be from a lot of different things, fear, greed, whatever it may be. Um, so those are the, some of the uh, th those demons that you're going to have to kind of iron out and look within yourself and say, I'm struggling with this. Let me let me kind of focus on it and um, fix those issues. But today I want to share with you a strategy, which I like to call uh, a secret formula that I put together in reference to how I trade the future market. It's going to kind of give you... Uh, just an understanding from my mindset of what and how I look at the markets and how I drive it from a higher point or higher base chart down to a lower base chart. All right. So first and foremost, always start with the higher base chart. OK. And the reason speaking is that you want to identify the overall direction of the market. Is it moving higher? Is it moving lower? Higher base charts are going to put you in the right direction. Again, higher base charts when you are trying to figure out or devise a strategy in which way to trade are going to help you trade in the trend of the market. So if we're bullish, meaning that we're moving to the upside and we continuously break structure, I trade supply and demand. So it is a trend moving strategy or trading strategy. So if the market is bullish and is moving to the upside, breaking structure, I'm going to only have interest in looking for pullbacks to where the market comes back to a demand zone. Some of you may call them order blocks or whatever the case may be. But let me show you just an example. We're going to look at my 120 range chart. I trade range based charts, but if you trade time or tick of volume, it's all the same. Trade what charts work out for you and help you, um, meaning are visually from a perceptual basis, you know, um, are, are easy for you to read. Okay. Range based charts are just easy for me to read. Now, I do not know which time based charts are comparable to, you know, range and tick to range and all that good stuff, whatever. Um, you may have questions like that. You could ask someone in our chat community or our discord community, I like to call it, which it, which it is. Find that link down in the description portion of the video. It's free to join, okay? Um, so anyways, what I always like to do is like to look out at a bigger picture, all right? look, Make sure to do that, okay? A higher base chart. Are we moving to the upside or are we moving to the downside? Figure that out first and foremost. So if, I, if I'm looking at from June, about the midpoint, maybe June 20th time frame, I'm seeing that we are moving lower, okay? So, and the market can do something different. I mean, we can have reverses in the market uh, at any given times. And lots of times you'll see, with the market maybe trending in one session and then it may be reversed in another. Say coming out of London, we could be bullish. Moved into to the U.S. session or New York session, we could be uh, bearish. Now, here we got the market moving lower. And what is it doing? Always make sure to look to your left-hand side of your chart. It's breaking structure lower, okay? If we are starting to break structure lower, all right, to the downside, then that's where you want to be looking for opportunities to go short, all right? So when it made this high right here, which is now a major high, as it's breaking structure lower, um, is moving through and taking out, you know, areas below levels. All right. So if, the, if it's doing that, we're going to just want to be looking for opportunities to take um, um, short positions. OK, back at key areas of supply. So keep that in mind. Breaking structure lower, pull back to key areas of supply. Breaking structure higher, taking out major swings. Then we're going to be looking for pullbacks to key areas of demand. So we're running to the downside. And at this point, I would be interested in looking for opportunities to go short. Some of you may want to or possibly use, you know, EMAs or SMAs or maybe even the volume weighted uh, average price indicator. I'm not saying trade and use that as a means of helping you get into a trade, but it may kind of give you some guidance as far as, you know, which direction. We're breaking structure lower. 
The big wrap is above us. We'll pull back to a key area supply. Then look for opportunities to maybe go short, short at supply zones. But not from the higher base chart. I like to mark my zones and I mark them off a higher base chart and then move down to a lower base chart. I talk about confluence, confirmation here as part of the strategy. In numerous videos, please spend some time watching the videos here in this channel. If you spend time watching and educate or watching the videos, you will educate your own self and see how I trade. Okay. I'm not telling anyone to trade just like me, but we have individuals that are part of our Discord community that trade very similar to, and if not the same, and are profitable as well. Uh, many of them have passed, you know, their own evaluations. Now, I don't trade prop firms. I've been trading with my own funds since, you know, over 13 years ago. So, anyways, moving on, moving lower, breaking structure to the downside. Okay. And then what you see here is what? We start to push back higher. Now, when we do push back higher, yes, we're breaking structure back to the upside, taking down structure to the left, creating structure as we move higher. These are minor areas of structure. So what we have is this high here, okay? And then we have this low here. This is a major high, and then we do have some structure or minor areas of structure within this leg, this high, this low. We break this high, then we're breaking a major high, okay? So the market pushes up, breaking structure, creates this high right here. Hasn't quite yet taken out this high back up here, resting at 20,372. But as long as we are breaking structure higher to the upside, all right, even minor areas of structure, and we have this major up here, we can look for pullbacks where there is demand at, okay, where there's demand at, uh, to go long, okay, because now we're breaking structure back to the upside. So the market, you just want to follow the ebbs and flows, breaking structure lower, breaking structure higher. In this case here, we're starting to break structure back to the upside. This is a demand zone. Why? Aggressive buying. You see lots of green bars to the upside. Now, one of the most significant things that I have to see as part of the strategy and how I trade um, is a pullback to a zone that's untested, unmitigated. An untapped zone where there is a gap at. So understand that, okay? Because that raises my interest or stakes of me wanting to take a trade in the direction to the zone, in reference to the zone I'm, I'm interested in trading from. Demand zone, I want to go long. I got bullish activity here, and I have a uh, gap where, where it's an unmitigated, untested zone. Boom, taps it. What does it do? It goes to the upside. Now, again, I mark the zones from my higher base chart. I'm not taking the trades from my higher base chart. I'm just marking them from, from, the, from the higher base 120, or it could be a 60 range chart. Um, and then I'm looking for opportunity when I scale down to maybe a 12 or 24 range. Now, what I found, the markets are always changing, conditions are changing. Um, what I like to see, and I'm starting to pay more close attention to, is that with 120, I like to see if I mark my zones from there, then I'll move down to the 24 range and look for some rejection. Those two charts seem to kind of work very well together. The 120 range and the 24 range, uh, in, and then the 60 range and the 12 range, okay? So, 120 range, demand zone. Break structure again to the upside. We have a demand zone resting right here as well. Now, it takes some time for it to come back to it, but... Before it does that, what does it do? It breaks structure. Um, as a rug structure here to the upside, you actually got two demand zones here. You have one resting right here untapped and one down here untapped. You can see the first one that it came back to right here, it actually rejected it and broke higher. Broke structure again to the upside, all right? Um, and then it, it, it broke another area structure back to the upside again, as you can see here. So now you have to understand this. Yes, these are structural breaks to the upside and the market is not always going to stop and um, meaning give you a full on explosive rejection right at the first area or first zone. So, and I've talked about this in videos before. You see where the market made this breaking structure right here to the upside where it made this high right here. We still haven't ran the high up here yet, but it did make a high as it's breaking stru structure higher to the upside. These are minor structure breaks to the upside. It pulls back to this key area right here. Does it reject it? Yes, but be, be, uh, be mindful that on a higher base chart, it could tap into any one of these fair value gaps right here and reject and push lower. Okay, so you have to understand that just as well. So when you see with the market's broken multiple areas of structure to the upside, what you first and foremost want to do, what I do is I look below and say, see other areas or other gaps that the market needs to fill, meaning other areas where demand may be resting at, where there are unmitigated zones that haven't been tapped yet, where gaps need to be filled at. Yes, you have them all the way back down here, 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 here. And down here, the market is going to take interest to want to probably push lower. We are, we are, we are pushing higher here. And we're very higher here in comparison to this low, this leg right here. Yes, this was the last demand zone that I created on the push to the upside. When it gets back here, 
be very cautious because you're taking the upper end of a leg, meaning this is not even the 50% area right here. You're up here like around the 76%. This would be the halfway point, the 50%, and then lower to the 23.6. I'm just talking fib numbers, and but I don't trade fibs, guys. I'm just telling you in reference to legs and movement, be careful where you take your trades from because the market, if this gap's resting, look, if I'm interested in taking this demand zone right here, I'm going to at first. I'm going to kind of um, look and, and eliminate things. Is this the best area to take a trade from? Probably not. Yes, we're below the probably the you know the VWAP. But the thing about it is that here is um, right here in this demand zone. There's other demands resting below where gaps need to be filled in. And as you can see, the market comes down and fill those areas. Now it does reject for some other ones like right here demand zone. I'm not telling you not to look for opportunities from a lower base chart at 24 range, which we are going to take a look at. To show you where this key opportunity to take trades going long, but just be mindful if you take trades going long from any key area of demand where there is an unmitigated zone at, be mindful of for one fair value gaps above you and also areas of resistance where possibly there could be resistance or an area of supply resting above where the market can reject it. Price action, you got to pay close attention to it. So the market, the market does reject here. You probably got a few points here if you went long. Again, be very mindful of these fair value gaps. These are gaps in the market where the market can actually bounce it. Uh, and also right here, you have uh, another one, a zone right here. So what I'm going to show you now is, let's, let's take a look at this zone right here. This was at on June 28th, right around 1240. It comes back and taps this area of demand right here at 1240 in the afternoon on June 28th. Let's go down to the entry chart in which I like to look at for rejection mark the zone off a higher base chart move down to a lower base chart to look for it for the opportunity i'm going down now to my 24 range all right so let's go to 24 and first and foremost let me do this for you so you can under, so you can see it clear uh, across all charts okay i think i may have talked about this same zone before all right see that rectangle zone right there that blue one right there that's the higher time frame 120 range uh demand zone now what I do from this point here, all I want to see is that where the market is creating a demand. Okay. Uh, so the market pushed up here, pulled back, boom, blasted the upside, aggressive buying, unmitigated zone resting right here, meaning the market has to tap into it. This is a demand zone. But if you pay close, close attention to what took place here, the market would do this from time to time. And it may not always test the zone when you get that demand um, off of the, the lower time frame. It pushed up here, created an area of demand. And when it pulled back, it tapped into the area of support. It didn't 100% tap the support, I mean, uh, the demand zone. Now, it's up to you to take this trade or not. You know, I don't trade support and resistance. Um, it just was a valid support zone to trade. And it follows the same rules in reference to if it taps a zone, or excuse me, if it taps a, a level of, or, or an area of interest, if you trade support, and for example, here, you're going to wait for the break and close of the candle to go long. All right. That's the projection we're looking for when the market comes back to a uh, an area of interest. For me, it would be demand, but it didn't take place here. It didn't tap it. So I just missed that opportunity there. OK, but if it had it, if it did come back, see that small box right here, that's the demand zone created off the 24 range. And if it does come back, tap the zone. OK. I prefer for it to tap it wicked and move above, above and, and break structure to the, not, not break structure, excuse me, break and close up a candle to the upside. So meaning, I'm going to show you, if we tap the zone and continue pulling down, tap the box right here, wicked it, moved above, and then broke, you know, with the close of a candle above in the opposite direction, meaning going back long, I'm going to want to take the trade to fill, I mean, excuse me, to fill in these gaps right here and then take it back up to this high right here. And you see that that's what it did off of this area of support. It didn't hit the area of demand. But most times when it does do that and it pulls back to a lower base zone where we marked a higher base zone first, then we've got the demand zone created on the lower base zone, pulls back. Now we mark a demand zone on the lower base chart. When it taps that zone, again, we look for the rejection. Rejection and confirmation is where the, it taps the zone and breaks and close above a candle to go long, okay? And then we're going to look to see what we can take it to. So if that had happened, and then we got into a trade right around, say, 20,000, we're going to take it all the way back up to 2020. 20,020. Uh, 20, Those are the type of trades I like to uh, take because I'm looking for at least 20 points out of the NASDAQ on, on each trade. Now, here was a... Um, let me go back to this 120 and take this off here so I don't have a lot of uh, conf conflicting zones. Now, this was a supply opportunity because the market started breaking structure to the downside. You can see it created a supply zone right here. 
All right, supply right here. The market's running lower. It 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 creates uh, aggressive selling right here. When it comes back, we're talking around about 130. Let's go back to the 24 range chart. 130 is in this time frame right here, as you can see. So when it gets back to the zone here, this is that big zone is that 120 uh, supply zone. It gets into it. Just because it taps into the zone first off the higher base chart, we're not looking to go short just rip yet. We want to see where the market has broken structure to the downs. I mean, excuse me, where it has created a, a supply zone to the downside. Okay, meaning we, we it's showing its interest where it wants to push lower. We got a, a supply area marked up on the higher base. Now we want to see where it's creating a supply area on the the uh, lower chart. I mean, the lower base chart, the, the twenty four range, taps into the higher base, boom, swing to the downside, aggressive selling. That supply. But we see where it pulled back. It didn't immediately come back to it. But it did eventually come back to that area. And look what happened when it gets back into it. It gets into the zone, as you can see right here. And let me move this away because it looked like it may have. Yep, it wicked right above it. So this would be, you could consider this a, a grab of liquidity in a sense here. Um, so the zone is pretty much invalid. Once does a, 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 um, Excuse me, a candle, a wick of a candle closes or wicks above an area. I like to call that invalid, as you see here. But even when it does that, it may come back and fold back the opposite direction. So this would be more so treated as like a liquidity sweep, liquidity grab. And it does run lower to the downside. So that still was a uh, setup that you could take. I talk about liquidity sweeps and liquidity grabs just as well. But that's a different type of strategy that I like to trade, um, you know, outside of trading supply and demand. And from there, what we can see is the market is, what does it do? It's breaking structure lower. It's taking out areas over here. It's creating structure as it moves lower. Then now we got this high here and this low right here. Okay. So the market turns back around. You know, it has its ebbs and flows. It starts to move higher, breaking structure back to the upside here. These minor areas of structure is moving higher. Okay. So what you can do is look for opportunities possibly to go long, right? But here was a uh, an opportunity where you could have taken a short entry if you notice, like right here, the market pushed lower, pulled back, broke structure to the downside. Uh, this right here, if you if you all well, you may say was well, this a supply area right here, low probability. I talk about high probability and low probability zones just as well. Um, you know, low probability are ones where the market has already tested the zone as, and now it is a mitigated zone. I don't want to take those. I like to see we fresh zones that haven't been tapped into, like this area of uh, demand resting down here. The market continue breaking structure lower, but we do have a key area of demand right here. Remember what I said in this leg here, we, we got multiple areas of demand to the downside. It was demand here and demand resting right here. It taps this demand zone here on the 28th around about 3:30 in the afternoon. Rejects it and then goes moves to the upside there and then you know it it's testing some area. This is area resistance right here and then it moves lower. So you can move down to your 24 range and look for uh, an opportunity to go um, go long here. Okay, meaning looking for a a demand setup off the lower base chart 24 range. Okay, or whatever chart you you know you, you kind of use uh, the trade from. I like again. I'm using multiple chart confluence to get me into nice setups. Okay, and then we had the market. You know where it moves lower okay there's a supply zone resting right here on the 120. um you can look again move down to your lower base chart look for an opportunity and then we start to move move back higher uh breaking through minor areas of structure back to the upside here and then it you know it's pulling back so it's swinging higher breaking structure okay you may push up pull back breaking higher pulling back breaking higher pulling back so each time it makes a move it's moving to the upside you can look for you know the market to come back and tap into some area to look for an opportunity all right so let's pay attention to this area right here i want i want to talk about this before i end the video you see this zone right here this is a supply zone yes because the market look at this beautiful area of selling right here the market took a while we're talking um a few days before it gets back to that zone. Be mindful of you know zones to where the market takes so long to get back to it, because if the market moves away and it starts to move to the downside, and this could be the same thing in reverse if it's moving to the upside, we have a loss of selling to the downside, and it doesn't immediately within the session or within the, you just say an hour or so pull back to that zone. Be very careful. This took several days for it to get back to that zone. So by then, if it's pushing to the upside and breaking structure and it taps into a zone that was created several days ago, uh, be very careful because they may want to try and break through it more likely, right? Because uh, they're already moving to the upside and breaking structure that's and aiming for this high up here. But it does tap into that zone. And again, 
it is a valid su supply zone but again it was you know it took a some some time several days to get back to it what i like to do when i see things like this and if i if i'm going to take a trade like this i'm looking at what's below yes we have gaps okay um and it's thinking in my mind, the fact is, is that the first gap, uh, where there's a fair value gap, say, for example, is right here where that blue line is at, where it says gap field. I marked that because I took a, a very quick scalp on that trade on the supply area yesterday. I'm going to show you what I did. So I marked the zone up on my 120 range, and then I moved down to my uh, 24 range. This is that area. Let me go ahead and do this so you can see it. Okay, all charts. And then I go down. So this is that area right here. It comes into the zone, all right, and then at that point, or at that point when it taps into the zone, I'm looking for an area of demand to be created, and there really wasn't one that was um, made sense to take until it got up here, all right, and then it created this area of, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, not demand, guys, supply, sorry, uh, supply created, because again, look, we're taking a supply setup off the higher time frame, or higher base chart, where we mark the zone up, and then we, all we're doing is moving down to a lower base chart to find us a supply, an area of supply. So it does right here. Pushes down, creates an area, a small area of supply, pulls back on the 24 range. Again, I'm taking my trades off of the lower base chart, not the higher base chart, okay? The market comes back to that area right there, and all I'm doing is looking for the break and close of a candle to go to go short. The million dollar question always is where to take a trade to, especially on something like this where the market took so long for it to get back to several days. That first little gap right there that needs to be filled, that fair value gap, I'm aiming for that area right there and at least for it to, um, you know, to take my profit there. And that's the kind of setups. I, that's what I do when the market takes so long for it to get back to. All right. So the market rejects that area, get the break and close of the candle. Maybe you got in here at 225. What well, we're going to take the trade down to the first gap to fill because of how long it took the market to get back to this zone several days more likely to try to push higher i'm just looking for the fill that first uh, fair value gap area uh, so i go back to my 24 range all right so wh where's that at okay that's right at uh 20,208 say for example okay go back we get the rejection where off of an area supply on the 24 range and what does it do it comes down and eventually it taps right into 2000 uh, 20,000 2008, 2007, and eight and three quarters. It feels exactly where I want to go. That first area of fair value gap. The market's going to fill some area. Okay, if it projects it, it's got to fill some area, or it's going to try to fill some area before it continue moving in whatever direction it's trying to. In this case here, you know, it was already to you know back on 28 pushing lower and then it's starting to try to push higher it's going to break that zone it's going to aim for it but it doesn't mean that it won't give you a slight rejection uh to, to look for an opportunity to take a trade off of the lower base chart in this case here so it got into a trade right around i don't know uh 20 000, 2000 excuse me 20,225 and a half you take it down at 20,000 2000 uh 20,208 sorry tongue twisted okay so that's what i do on setups like that um to where the market is taking so long for it to get back to but all we're doing again uh i didn't mean to do that let me draw that back out all we're doing again is just marking up first of all understanding and following structure what is it doing okay once you identify the the direction of the market then mark your supply zone or your or your demand zones based on what, what the market is doing okay in reference to structure the, and mark i like i mark mine off of a higher base chart and all i do is just move down to a lower base chart and either looking for a demand setup or looking for a supply setup based on what the market is doing if i mark a demand zone off the higher base chart i'm looking for an area i'm looking for a demand setup to, to take place on the lower base chart vice versa if the market is moving lower supply on the higher base supply on the lower base chart and that's pretty much it so this is that you know my secret formula uh to you know that helps me um, make an income from trading each and every day. This is a breakdown of the strategy in reference to, and I go more into detail about certain things and, and showing example after example and, and video after video here on this channel. But if you're someone that's interested as well as getting the trade breakdowns where I really go into detail and talk about stop loss placement, TPs, profit target areas, what I was thinking in reference to trades that I actually took, posted on the Discord and, and made. Uh, these are trade setups that are breakdowns for those that are part of our private community. Lots of you always DM me and ask me how you can become an elite member. It's only $6.99 a month. That's not a day. That's not a week. That's only a month. $6.99. And you can gain access to those trade breakdown videos to where I'm uh, going into detail about the um, 
trade setups, okay? Those are extra videos. I don't have time to be doing that here on the channel because I'm trying to also give free game away, give free information and education away in reference to the experience and how I trade. But I go into detail for all those that are interested in those type videos to where, you know, I really go into detail about trade setups. Um, again, if you want to become an elite member, that link is down in the description portion of the video. All you have to do is click on it. You'll see two links there when you get to the, the, the uh, description portion of the video. You'll see one that's for the, the Discord, which is free, and then the uh, the Elite Channel Supporter group. If you want to become a, an Elite member, click on that link right below the Discord link. You'll see two tiers that'll pop up. Make sure to choose the one for $6.99, and that's going to give you access to the trade breakdowns as well as the video playlist. And I believe I, I'm working, you know, I, whenever I find time, I post other videos for the elite members as well. Like I did a, a market structure video, which is a great video uh, many weeks back. But you have extra video content there to where I go into detail about the trade uh, breakdowns. Okay. But hey, if you celebrate the um, the holidays uh, tomorrow and maybe maybe into the weekend, I wish everyone a safe safe holiday uh, weekend. And if you're trading uh, today or, or maybe on Friday, uh, I wish you a uh, very safe and successful trading or rest of the trading week. Be careful because Friday is NFP as well. And we have a holiday week. So, um, just be very careful, uh, this week at all this, this week alone. That's why I'm trying, I'm taking it light. So, uh, but again, if you are a first time viewer, someone that hasn't subbed to the channel yet, Please take the time to go ahead and subscribe by clicking on the sub button down below. Make sure to turn your post notifications on. And last but not least, if you found value in today's video and you like the video content like this, you can find other videos with, with valuable, valuable educational content here on this channel. Uh, drop a like on the video today, all right? Uh, but again, this video is talking more so about the secret formula that I've created for myself in reference to a strategy that has allowed me to become profitable and make an income full time. Take care.